We're going to be looking very closely, obviously, at the congressional races, especially in New York. Mm -hmm. um, and of course, we also have a governor's race here in New York that I'm going to be. Is that going to be close? Uh, yeah, close. You know, it's funny. Uh, probably not. And yet, um, you know, I think that the Republicans are gaining a lot of ground in New York. And I think that, you know, from the, fo the folks I talk to very closely, that the governor has been uh, very conservative. Um, people around her are very nervous. So right. it may be closer right. than we think. New York, New York. Clay, How I'm so excited about this possibility here. As a New Yorker, Buck, if Lee Zeldin was able to win this race. I would be it would be amazing. It would well what it really it's 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 deja vu all over again, as Yogi yes. Berra said. I know some of the Yogi Berra stuff. Uh and it would bring us back to a feeling of the Giuliani era of the nineteen nineties, which I lived through in this city. And, I mean, it, it felt miraculous. The, the difference in New York between, let's say, 1992 and the year 2000, it was like you were living in a different city. And I think from the state level now, there's a lot that obviously would still need to be done in the, in the city. Um, but I think the governor could, could push and work with the mayor, push the mayor in the right direction, fire the terrible DA here. Um, you know, they said, oh, we don't think it's going to be that close. Clay, uh, Trafalgar had last week Hochul up two points now this is a huge democrat advantage state i think by registration i, I don't want to guess at the number but i think it's basically a double digit registration advantage um in, ter per in terms of percentage points but i i see Hokel up two points this is within striking distance she is more than almost well there are a few candidates who are trying to do this fetterman's one of them just trying to take a knee like just trying to run out the clock because how exactly is she going to make things better? The the gun free zone in Times Square that a judge had to say isn't even constitutional anymore. You imbecile, Hochul. <laughs> this is what's going on, Clay. Yeah, and she's not alone in this. I mean, there are a lot of Democrats. I think kind of battening down the hatches. I saw the numbers we had Tudor Dixon on uh, was it last week. I think Michigan governor candidate. Down to six points there. I saw Joe O'Day in Colorado down to six points. And, Buck, we're going to talk to her later this week. Christine Drazen in Oregon is now favored, the Republican, to become the first Republican elected governor in Oregon since the 1980s. So when you start to see these seismic shifts that are taking root here, um, there was this fear Oh, the, initially, Democrats, they were afraid there was going to be a wave. And then they said, actually, we may keep the House and the Senate because of abortion and Donald Trump and everything else. And now, as we sit here four weeks out and start to look at the numbers, Buck, I think there's going to be a wave. The question is just how high is that Republican wave going to be and who among the Democrats is going to get swept out of office? This is the part of the race where we got we to gotta kick, got to keep pushing. There's no doubt. And also, when you hear positive news on this show... It doesn't mean, hey, come election day, you can just kick back and say, I don't need to do anything. I don't need to go vote. No, no, no. You all have to do your part and get out and cast your ballots. But it could be a really fun election night. I know we have a lot of listeners in the Portland area. And, Buck, the reason why I was mentioning the Lee Zeldin thing is I feel like when you live in a blue state, you can feel, particularly in the wake of COVID, like you just get – you used the analogy of boxing the other day. Like, you're just taking body blows every day. You're so frustrated uh, at what you see happening in your state. I'm telling you, Oregon, Christine Drazen is going to be on with us on Thursday, and she's going to win this race. So if you're listening to us in Portland or you are in the state of Oregon and you have been so fed up over what you have seen in the Pacific Northwest and you're just saying, can we please get some element of sanity in this state. Well, Christine Drazen is going to be it. We got people listening across the state of Oregon, but if you're listening on KEX AM in Portland, please, your vote is going to matter. And I know what this is like as a New Yorker, where you're like, oh, it doesn't matter, and, you know, it's tough to, I got to go, and I stand in a line or something. I mean, I voted in so many pointless elections in New York at this point, I, don't even, I can't even count them. Uh, your vote in Portland will matter. The state of Oregon can have a win for sanity. I've said this, you know, it's funny, actually, our buddy Jesse Kelly has also talked about this, I know, on his show. I mean, the Pacific Northwest is one of the most beautiful places yep. in the entire United States for what it is. And Portland 
could be and should be a great city. Not a good city, a great city. It has been hit by wokeness and leftism and crazy town Democrat policies. It can start to move in the right direction, which would be better for everybody. The, the great thing about our side winning, Clay, is that it's better even for the lunatic Democrats. They don't admit it and they don't know it, but everybody wins when we win. No, no doubt. And by the way, that's true in the Pacific Northwest, Seattle, Portland, uh, even if you want to go down the coast a little bit further, San Francisco, beautiful places that have been led to ridiculous uh, ridiculous political uh, externalities, unfortunately, by all of these idiot Democrats in charge. Last evening was the debate in Ohio between J.D. Vance and Tim Ryan. They want to try and convince you that Tim Ryan is going to win this race or that he's making it super competitive. I just don't believe it. Ohio is going to show up and they're going to vote for J.D. Vance to win I believe, by seven or eight points. I'm just going to tell you something. I know somebody who is a Democrat strategist. I do have, I have friends on the other side. Yes. I don't, I don't let them peek into our tent too much, but I have friends on the other side. And this person, I will not even, uh, the gen, giving the gender would probably uh, let people get too close to the, uh, the source here, said Tim Ryan was the worst human being she, had, he, she <laughs> we don't know, had ever worked with in politics. Had ever worked with in politics. I'm just telling, this is what I was told. The worst Democrat this person had ever worked with in politics. So just so keep that in J- mind. J.D. Vance is going to win this race, but I just want to play a couple of statements here. One, uh, they've been running against J.D. Vance, this conversation about this 10-year-old from Ohio who supposedly had to go to a different state, and this has been a uh, a, a constant attack from Tim Ryan. I thought J.D. Vance handled this really well and turns it against Ryan Listen to this conversation. Play cut three, guys. The 10-year-old girl, the case that we've, of course, heard a lot about, an incredibly tragic situation. I mean, look, I've got a 9-year-old baby girl at home. I cannot imagine what's that, what that's like for the girl, for her family. God forbid something that, like that would happen. I have said repeatedly on the record that I think that that girl should be able to get an abortion if she and her family so choose to do so. But let's talk about that case. Because why was a 10-year-old girl raped in our community, raped in our state in the first place? The thing the media and Congress and Ryan, they talk about this all the time. The thing they never mentioned is that poor girl was raped by an illegal alien. Somebody that should have never been in this state in the first place. Boom. Turning it, in, turning it into a moment to speak the truth and politically go on offense by using the truth here, which is the Democrats are an open borders party now. They refuse to do anything to slow. They like this loophole of people claiming asylum. They like the overwhelmed border that allows the cartels and all the rest to come flooding in with their drugs. And to that point, on fentanyl, which has hit Ohio really badly, there's actually a really interesting book by, I think it's an L.A. Times reporter, Sam Quinones, called Dreamland. And it is about the origins, both from the pharma and the cartel side, of the fentanyl crisis in the Rust Belt, in Ohio, and West Virginia. How did this happen? It's a, it's a fascinating and heartbreaking story. But I, So I just recommend the book to people if you want to know. Dreamland is a very good book. Uh, and Ohio has been hit terribly by fentanyl. The border and fentanyl are absolutely, they're just two sides of the same coin. I mean, they are inextricably linked. And J.D. hit him on this point and made it clear that Joe Biden is refusing to do anything about this. Yes, the fentanyl crisis is way worse than it was two years ago. Why is it way worse? Because Tim Ryan and Joe Biden have conspired together to reject every border wall funding proposal, to reject every proposal to cut off the amnesty, to reject every proposal that would actually secure our border and stop yes, the flow of these illegal drugs. I mean, it's just checkmate on this issue, man. It, it's not, it wasn't even a close debate in a whole range of issues, but on this issue, the Democrats have no answer. Yeah, and let me hit this last one, too, because I've been hammering this, and I would still encourage anybody out there working on a campaign This is an 80-20 issue, biological men deciding to identify as women. And J.D. Vance actually went after Tim Ryan a bit here on cut two in this debate saying, 
The extremist here is you. You're the one who believes biological men should be competing against women. Listen to this. I don't like any litmus test for any Supreme Court nominations. I just want good judges who interpret the Constitution. That's what I really want. And look, Tim Ryan just accused me of being extreme on the LGBT issue. This is a guy who voted just a couple of months ago, right, for the Equality Act, the so-called Equality Act that would literally remove federal funding for free and reduced lunch programming for schools that don't let biological males participate in biological female sports. The extremist here, Tim, is you. And again, I don't expect you to actually answer the substance of what I said, but let's just at least be honest with voters about what our actual views are. Hammer this one. If you're out there and you are coming down the home run stretch, look, Dr. Oz, John Fetterman came out in favor of the Leah Thomas situation. He thinks dudes should be able to identify as women and become women's champions. This is something that 80% of the American public rejects. Hammer it, hammer it, hammer it, because it's a perfect window into how extreme the Democrat perspective has become in this arena. They are willing to tell the most blatant, obvious, and really offensive lies in the service of their party's power. That's the gender issue goes right to the heart of that. I mean, they're willing to tell you that up is down and down is up. And men can get pregnant. And men are women and women are men. And this is lunacy, and this is authoritarianism, it is collectivism, it is all tied together. Um, And it's important that every candidate, every Democrat is pushed on this issue.